Tilo, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live. But you can leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Uh, right behind me, you see it, little warning screen, man. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be a very controversial type energy where opinions are going to be flying left and right. So there's the warning. Don't forget we are on Twitch.com. If you do want to catch a live, usernames at the bottom of the screen, right? Uh, also, that is my Twitter account as well, that first handle. Don't forget we do got Patreon. That's where we watch stuff that we cannot watch on YouTube, such as Game of Thrones, uh, Brasic, and all, etc. You know. Anywho, Pierre Morgan Uncensored. Complete fake news BS. Pierre Morgan versus Andrew Tate on the riots. This should be highly toxic. I'm here for it though. Respectfully. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Salute, salute. As you can see, I'm not doing this live. I could have done it live on YouTube or Twitch. I'm deciding to do it and just watch. A lot of people that watch me covering these protests got something to say to me about it specifically, and I can never understand it. I'm just a person from the outside looking in. Now, do I scour the internet for the other side of the opinion? Absolutely. I'm looking for the Islamic people too, the Muslims too. I'm looking for their stories. I'm looking for them on the side of the fence recording and speaking and giving their perspective. Do I find it? Absolutely not. I don't see it anywhere. I, don't, I can't find it. So if you, instead of talking, could leave me a link to these so I can record to both sides equally... That would be great. Anyway. On July 29th, a 17-year-old boy murdered three girls and injured eight more children in a horrific mass stabbing at a Taylor Swift-themed dance club. Yeah, first and foremost, man, RIP to those kids. And I hope everybody involved um, that is injured makes a speedy recovery and gets the, honestly, the, the, the they're going to need help from the, after this. Mentally, they're going to need to talk to counselors, therapists, whatever they need. I hope they get it. I hope the uh, UK government provides it absolutely free as well. Um, RIP. Class in Merseyside. The alleged killer was born in, in Wales to Rwandan parents. The police did not initially confirm his identity because he's aged under 18. Disinformation filled the vacuum instead. Right wing influences spread a. And quick question. If. 16 is the age of consent in the UK, so why can't you release under from 16 and up's name? I don't understand. Like, I, there's so many, like, I don't know. Okay, continue. Battery of false disinformation filled the vacuum instead. Right wing influencers spread a battery of false claims online, including that the killer was a devout Muslim and a Syrian refugee. Right, I did hear that. Have since spread to at least 16 towns and cities across the UK. Far-right thugs have sieged mosques and hotels housing asylum seekers. Groups of armed Muslim men have attacked people in the street. These appalling scenes have become a stain on Britain's global reputation. It's been debauchery from both sides equally, and I have seen that. Elon Musk has commented that civil war is inevitable in the UK. Many US conservatives are amplifying the unrest as apparent. I do feel that as well, that there's a lot of civil unrest and it's a very, very volatile situation. It's very, very, very volatile. It needs to be corralled before something goes left. Evidence of failed multiculturalism. One of the influencers accused of fanning the flames is Andrew Tate, a recently converted Muslim man who has been heard his... claims in the days after the mass stabbing have been viewed tens of millions of times. And he joins me now. Andrew Tate, uh, welcome back to... 
I'm going to be honest, I haven't really heard anything from Andrew Tate. I haven't been searching for it. I haven't heard anything. You know, he's not on the, like, I, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. Here we Uncensored. go. Uncensored. It's been a while. It has. And obviously you've, as in fact I'm about to talk to you, uh, Nigel Farage, who is now a member of parliament in the UK and who has been saying some very inflammatory things in the last week or so about these riots, has blamed you and uh, named you in a radio interview as for uh, the person who spread the disinformation, which he then believed. Um, I want to start by playing a, a, a clip of a video you posted to uh, Instagram, I think it was, on the 29th of July that you posted to various social media platforms in which was your response to what had happened. So an undocumented migrant decided to go into a Taylor Swift dance class today and stab six little girls. That's right, somebody arrived in the UK on a boat. Nobody knew who he was. Nobody knows where he's from. The media is, of course, hiding the fact that this is a 17-year-old male. They don't want to highlight how ridiculous it is that we allow military-aged males, combatants, to flood our shores. I don't see any protests in the UK. I don't see anybody complaining. Nobody's outside of the school. Nobody's outside the police station. The soul of the Western man is so broken that when the invaders slaughter your daughters, you do absolutely fucking nothing. Now, now that... that How did the misinformation spread so rapidly? You know what I'm saying? Like that, like, is it's confirmed that Ruddy is from Wales. Born in America. I mean, not born in America. Born in the UK. How did that even spread like that? Did somebody just grab on and like, oh, here's an opportunity. Like, how did that happen? This video has been viewed 15.1 million times. X limited uh, the post's visibility because of its rules on hateful conduct. But the bottom line, Andrew, is that almost everything you said in that video was completely untrue. And yet it was uh, apparently seized upon uh, online, spread wide and far, and made people believe what you were saying. So my question for you off the top here is, why did you race to spread such woeful disinformation given the massive following you have. Yeah, did he have the wrong information was given to Andrew or did he assume? I am curious. Good question. And encourage people to take action against a, a caricature and description of who had perpetrated this, which was simply untrue. Well, firstly, I'll start by saying I didn't know Nigel Farage said those things about me, which is a shame because I'm actually a fan of him. I think he's trying to do the right thing. I also understand in his political sphere, sometimes he has to hang other people out to dry to save himself because he's getting heat also. Secondly, I'll argue with you about the fact that everything I said was untrue. I think the only thing I said that was untrue is that perhaps he was undocumented. It was a 17 year old male, it was a migrant. He did kill little girls. And advocating for people to stand outside and make it clear that they're unhappy with what happened is not a dangerous ideology. We live in a democracy where we have the right to protest and the right to make it clear when our voices are not heard. I recently protested against the Olympic ceremony outside the French embassy, I'm not sure if you saw it, complaining about how they depicted Jesus Christ because I was unhappy with what I saw. And I think that when people- Side note, yeah, that was wild. I'm not even gonna lie to you, that was wild. Feel like they have a voice, they're not likely to get violent. And the problem we have now is that people do not have a voice, which is why we're seeing rioting, which is why we're seeing looting because people do not feel like there's a political solution any longer. And what I was trying to do was encourage people to stand up and make their voice heard in a peaceful way to avoid violence. Because when people would feel like they're not heard, violence is always the end result. Yeah, but you, you've actually had the complete opposite effect. And you know the massive following that you have and the influence that you can wield. And by spreading, I mean, again, you've repeated the fact this kid who's been, uh, who has obviously now been charged with very serious uh, crimes, including killing these three girls, uh, was a migrant. It, it wasn't a migrant. He was born in Wales. His parents were legal immigrants from Rwanda. So he's not a migrant. He's a he's somebody born in Wales, born in the United Kingdom. Well, first things first, it's unfair for you to say that I've had an opposite effect. What I did was point out the facts of the situation that a 17-year-old male killed little girls. If I point out the facts of the situation that the sky is blue and then people go and decide to riot because I've said those things, it does not mean those things are not true. That's the first thing. Secondly, 
Here's where we have the dichotomy of the UK. And I actually think this conversation is going to be one of the most important and potent conversations of modern times, especially as this issue is not going to be solved anytime soon, Piers. The problem we have now in the UK is that we have a certain subsect of the population who believe because he was born in Cardiff, he is a Welsh man. And we have another subsect of the population who believe that even if he was born in Cardiff, he is not Welsh. I'm currently in Romania. I'm an American and British citizen. The woman who I have a child with is Italian. The child was born in Romania. The Romanians do not consider that child Romanian, not by their view of the world. If I had a child in- Solid point, solid point he's making. Not gonna lie, solid point. If I came to the UK and I had a child with a, with a, with a UK woman, no, 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 no. No, if I came to the UK and met a woman that was Italian and had a baby with her inside of the UK, what would that baby be considered? That, that's a solid point. That's a solid point. Because I want triple, I would want my child to have tri tri triple citizenship. UK, American, and Italian. In China, they would not Speaking consider that point. kid Chinese. They would look at the face shape of the child and say, that's not a Chinese child. If I had a black child in Russia, they would not consider that child Russian. In the West, in the democracies, we do. But That's facts. And you know what? Somebody in the comments told me, uh, I was talking about this yesterday because I'm part Irish. And they said, don't come to the UK saying you're Irish. They won't care. I feel like that is validating what he's saying. Only one person said that, though. I don't want to say that. Everybody didn't say that, but only one person said that. But I, when he said it, I was like, I feel that. I wouldn't say that anyway. I'm, I'll just be American. But we have a problem because you now have two, you have a dichotomy of ideas. You have two different camps. And the camp that believe that this person perhaps isn't even Welsh in the first place are also the camp which are being suppressed and not allowed to speak and are being smeared and labeled as far right for having genuine concerns. And that is why things are exa getting exasperated and out of control. What we need is conversation and what we need is dialect. You cannot have a multicultural de democracy and ignore the concerns of one particular subsect of that culture, especially when it's the native culture, and expect everything to be fine forever. There's a lot of people who have a point of view. They didn't feel like they had a political solution anymore. And this is what's happening. The reason this dichotomy exists, Piers, please understand, if they are sitting there and they're accepting that this is a Welsh man, but now they're starting to get concerned for the safety of their children, and they don't feel like there's any kind of political solution, well, then they're going to come to the very simple and obvious conclusion that they'd rather not have anyone from anywhere else in their country to avoid these things happening again because they don't feel like there's any other political solution. This is a fail of the politicians. This is a failure of the leaders. It is the job of a leader to inspire all of the people to have trust in him, not just some of the people, not just the people he likes, not just the people on his party or the people he wants. It is his job as a leader to have every single person in the country believe that he cares about the issue and he's doing something actively to fix it. Instead, what Keir did was stand up and do the absolute opposite. Shut down any legitimate concerns. Tell people they don't have a voice. Tell people nothing is going to change is going to stay exactly the way it is. And let me tell you something. I want to make this very clear. There's a lot of people in the world who would rather go to jail and have a warm bed and three square meals a day than watch their children die. There's a lot of people who would rather go to jail than... I can't argue that. I can't argue that. I can't, before I let my daughter something happen to my daughter, I'd rather go sit in a five by five <laughs> on a concrete slab. On that, he's not lying. Watch their society collapse in real time around them. There's a lot of people who would really rather go to jail than feel unsafe to walk the street at night ever again. These are people who have lived in the same place for a very long time. They have a vested interest in this geographical location, and without political solutions being offered. I don't know how hubristic you must be to sit and expect anything other than what we've seen. This is a failure of leadership. And that's what's so disappointing about it. Bro. I'd agree. I'd agree. I said that when I was watching the riots. I was like, man, it's, 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 there's no solution. It's a failure from the top. And the people are mad. They're supposed to be living in a democracy. And people aren't being heard. It's more like a, a, a North Korea or something. You know what I'm saying? Like a... Like a what's it called? Where one leader rules everything, makes all the rules. I forgot what that's called right now. I'm drawing a blank. Oh my god, failed system of schooling. Uh, but yes, right. So here's my response to what you've just said.
first of all, all Keir Starmer has said, as far as I can see, is that he is going to bring the full force of the law against people who committed acts of violence. And the violence that was perpetrated... No, called them in far the right. Yeah, well, there were far right thugs who were leading this and they were attacking mosques. They were chanting anti-Muslim chants and they were doing this because there people was, there was a black there, person hang in on, the crowd. Would you say you've the had crowd your was say. I'm going to have I'm going to have my say now. It was put out falsely on social media that the person who did this was a Muslim. Not just a Muslim, but a Muslim who came in on one of the small boats, part of the very contentious, I ongoing issue of the small boat. I'm not saying you did. I'm saying this is what was put out on social media in a series of false posts, which then went viral, right? So he was supposedly a Muslim. Not true. Supposedly came in on a small boat. Not true. Supposedly on an MI6 watch list as a potential terrorist. Not true. None of this was true. And so on the back of that, far-right thugs who led this went up and attacked mosques and they went and attacked hotels with asylum seekers in there waiting to be protested and they were trying to set fire to them. Those are acts of despicable violence which were being led by far-right thugs. Now, yeah, I don't promote no type of violence. Peaceful protesting to make sure you're heard, cool. But the violent part of it is like, it, it, it really distorts what you're trying to get across. <coughs> And then, you know, every action has a reaction. So it's like, yeah. Not everybody involved in all these protests is a far-right thug. Some of them will be ordinary members of the, pe of the public trying to legitimately... Pro That's a fact. But what o negativity always, always will outshine, <laughs> will always outdo... the realness that's going on. You'll always see the negative instead of what's... The positive and that's what i'm saying the, 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 the message got clouded protest peacefully i completely accept it but the ones who were leading it who were committing the acts of violence and making the threats against the muslim community were doing so because they have been completely misled about who had done this it was not a muslim it was not an illegal immigrant it was not somebody on the mi6 watch list it was none of those things now you posted on July the 30th, the day after the killing. And I feel particularly incensed, by the way, that the deaths of these three young girls have been hijacked in such a reprehensible manner to attack Muslims when a Muslim had nothing to do with it, right? You put this on, on July the 30th, you posted a picture saying, this is the man from Cardiff. We're looking at this picture now. Uh, the murder of the little girl, straight off a boat, you said. Really? Uh, he wasn't straight off a boat because this wasn't the person yeah, who perpetrated the crimes. You got 4.3 million views for this. And a community notes clarified, this is not the man that killed, attacked the children and adults in South Pole. This image is of Kasonga Mabulu, who was arrested in Ireland in 2023 for a random knife attack at Dublin airport. So again, you know, 24 oh, hours later, you're posting oh, more, okay. you're posting more. My, no, you're posting apologies. complete disinformation. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not okay. Sir. It's not okay. Oh, I'm no, I'm no, it was not. Oh. Nah, he did do a crazy crime, but if that wasn't the crime that you were trying to say he did, though, Tate. Tate, you gotta have some accountability, though. Low key. Oh, man. Did I get the wrong, did I get the wrong stab? You got a guy, but he, yes, you did get the wrong one. Oh, I apologize, yeah, you did. Piers Morgan, of yeah, course. You I did. got the wrong stab. Yeah, you did. And he certainly, did. he certainly looked very Welsh to me. Let me make this clear. I'm a Muslim, and I think anybody who attacked a mosque is going to have to deal with God. I'm not worried about the full force of the law. They should worry about God itself. But I also want to make something very clear to all the people at home, and clear to you, that most of the white people are very frustrated, and they're finding an enemy amongst themselves to take it out on. I think that the white people on these streets have a lot more in common with the brown people on these streets than they do with the politicians, because that's the problem we have here. Keir did not just only say they're going to face the full force of the law. He told everybody with a point of view, everybody who's concerned about the safety of their children, that they are extremists. And that <coughs> is the most, that is the most aggravating language you can possibly choose when people finally have had enough of not feeling safe on their own streets any longer. We have people who cannot afford to pay their bills watching migrants arrive who are now being held up in hotels at the taxpayer's expense for indefinite and periods of time. We're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine. Nobody vote. From now on, right now, what I hear is, honestly, I've heard everything that Tate is saying right now. Like, the people have a genuine reason for concern 
and it's not being heard. And because they're speaking out, they're being labeled as this, that, and the third. Now, there is this, that, and the third using this particular instance as a vehicle to perpetuate what they got going on. Which is diluting the message that needs to be heard. Which is a valid concern. Which is a valid concern by the British people. But I do feel also on the other side where Pierce sits, there are, it is being taken out on innocent people. Innocent people. Now, there are migrants that got here not so correctly that are doing the most, that, that are not adhering to what the British law is. And there are people who are here conforming to what they need to do and, you know, living the dream, trying to achieve the dream. And what's happening is all of those people are getting mixed up in a bowl and being targeted, which is wrong. Which is wrong. Now, whoever they're talking about, who is the, are they talking about the PM? This guy who's labeling, who's doing this? Is that who they're talking about? He needs to fire his team. Whoever's telling them to say what he's saying, go go out here and speak from your heart at the end of the day. Right is right and wrong is wrong. I feel like I've, I've, I've said that very well, as well as I could say it. Voted for it. Nobody wants it. And everybody's struggling. Held up in hotels at the taxpayer's expense for indefinite and periods of time. We're sending billions of dollars to Ukraine. Nobody voted for it. Nobody wants it. And everybody's struggling to pay their bills. Energy prices are through the roof. Inflation is through the roof. Now they no longer feel safe on their streets. They don't want to put their daughters outside to play. The police won't protect them. The police so won't. The UK has got a lot of stuff going on, man. This on top of Brexit, it's like, oh, God. Then I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. On top of everything, you can On top of everything. The tipping point is crazy. Don't turn up for most crimes unless it's something you say bad on Facebook. And when they look for a political solution, they're ignored. What kind of powder keg are we building here through incompetent leadership in the UK? This is nothing but a leadership failure. There's not a country in the world where leadership could fail this spectacularly once again, and once see again, any Andrew, different result. All right. But once again, Andrew, you are spouting nonsense in what you've just said. Not all of it, but some of it is nonsense. You say, for example, nobody voted for the UK to support Ukraine. We've literally just voted Keir Starmer in, in the United Kingdom with a landslide majority, and he made it crystal clear before that election that he would be contributing billions of our pounds to help the people of Ukraine thwart a Russian dictator. Well, you may laugh, but you just literally said the complete opposite. So we did actually vote for a leader. and Dictator, that's what I was saying. That's the word I was trying to look for earlier, dictatorship the party that was completely committed to dedicating billions of pounds. And once again, I am not there. I have not lived a full life there. So I don't, once again, what I'm just saying, all I can do off, all I can do off, all I can go off is what I'm hearing. People are telling me to do my own research. I'm doing my own research <laughs> by listening. There's no way I can catch up on a lifetime of however old you are making these comments in the comment section. And whatever experiences on the ground you have went through, I'm never going to have that because I, I'm not from there. All I'm doing is just reacting. People forget what a reaction channel is. It's just me reacting to what's going on. That's not me living it. So I'm reacting to what he's saying and I'm reacting to what he's saying. Some of you will only hear me reacting to one side like because you're blocking me out when I, it comes to the other side. And it's crazy to me, but continue. Tons of taxpayer money to helping people in Ukraine defeat Vladimir Putin. So that again is a complete untruth that you've just espoused. 
I'm sure the people who are protesting up there in the north of England who can't afford to pay their bills, who are watching migrants live for free in hotels, who don't feel safe at night because the police don't have enough resources to turn up and respond to crime, are very happy that we're sending money to Ukraine. You're completely right. Yeah. The fact that you only had 20% of the populist vote has nothing to do with it. And the fact that every single party will send money to Ukraine because we live in a uniparty system, which is corrupt to the core in the first place. That's the reason why no matter who you vote for, the migrants keep coming. And no matter who you vote for, the money keeps getting siphoned out of the tax base and sent to Ukraine. That's the truth of it is that most people are starting to realize and wake up from the matrix and understand there are no political solutions because it's all a scam and it's all a lie. What we need is people to understand at home that we have to think outside the box and vote for somebody who's not part of this two-party, uni-party insanity, which is why I was a fan of Nigel Farage. Even if he sells me down the river, even if he says I'm a bad person, that's his prerogative and that's his decision to make. I still believe he's the best choice as, as a leader for the UK. Well, Nigel you Farage, don't have a country, you don't just, have a border. Well, hang on, hang on. Nigel Farage has literally just chucked you under a monumental bus. He's gone on LBC radio and he said the reason that he himself was promoting complete nonsense about the person who committed these heinous crimes was because of people like you. Andrew Tate, He's he names you. It. He says that you were responsible for spinning disinformation, which he- You know, I really love Pierre Morgan. I, I, like, I, like, I like his platform. I like what he does. He pulls somebody straight on here and, and, and addresses it to their face. I like this form. He was dumb enough to believe. Well, I never said he was a Muslim. I never said he was a Syrian. I never said he was on the MI6 watch list. The only thing I could have got incorrect is that he was an undocumented migrant. And if Nigel Farage has done that, that's his decision. He'll have to live with his conscience. I'm not here to tell him how to think. I'm also man enough to be understanding that not everybody has to like me all of the time for me to agree with some of the things they say. The biggest problem we have in the world today is everybody's so emotional, everybody's so upset all the time that if somebody says something bad about them, they pretend that person's completely bad. Nobody is completely bad. Nobody is completely evil. Everybody loves their children. Everybody wants to live in peace. A lot of people talk about the idea of war, but let me promise you, Piers, I'm a person who's had a very varied life. When you see people with machetes outside your door threatening you and the police aren't answering the phone anymore, you don't want war. The Muslims want peace. The white natives of the UK, the Christians want peace. Everybody wants peace. But when you have a political class which refuse to listen to absolutely anybody, do whatever they want, grind everyone into poverty irregardless, then you're going to have some sort of uprising. And it's unfortunate that the poor people... I agree. I agree. Oh, and I call hey, them. Everybody wants peace, but if, if nobody's listening... I'm poor, I mean the average person is turning on the average person as opposed to turning on the rich elites who are just plundering the country. That's the truth of what's Actually, happening what, here. Well, what is, you well, I think what is really... We played it. Yeah, the we, only thing I had incorrect was that he was undocumented. That's the only thing you could perhaps say he was incorrect. You, the London stabbing, Piers. The London Bridge attack, he was born in Pakistan. We want to sit here and talk about how the large a contingent of the people committing terror attacks in the UK and the most heinous crimes are not natively English people. And when we need to sit here and address this without being called racist, without being called far right, I'm a mixed race Muslim and I'm pointing out this very obvious truth. If we're not going to be able to point out the truth, what do you expect besides anger? Well, I mean, the, the sheer brass neck, frankly, Andrew, of you lecturing me about the truth when you've spent the last week spewing complete <laughs> fake news bullshit is breathtaking, <laughs> right? And also, I would Pierce. say you've also been spewing stuff that is blatantly racist. <laughs> On the 1st of August... No, no, I didn't... Okay, wait, wait. The first part, not when he got to the racism. That was crazy. Pierce, Pierce be calling it like he see it low-key. I feel like, Andrew, you did say some stuff that was not in uh, totally true. But I didn't know he was the source of it because, like I said, I ain't never I ain't never heard him say nothing. I don't know if I... I don't follow him on anything, I don't think, except, do I? Oh, I deleted him on Twitter when I was getting my Twitter together. That's why I haven't seen anything. Once again, man, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's this first one. Cursor's above it. Sorry. Post a cartoon saying, typical man from Cardiff. Let's look at that cartoon. This has had 11 million views. Yeah, yeah it's a taxpayer. It's, it's a migrant. I feel like um, Andrew Tate's persona is really getting in the way. His online persona. Because you know to be successful online, you got to have an online persona. It's the slight alter ego. And I feel like it's getting in the way of what he's really saying. All of his online trolling antics. 
Because this is really what it is. And Pierce doesn't, I think he has a concept of it and he's using it against him. He knows what it is. But, like, the average person does not understand an online personality. They doesn't. They don't understand that it's. There's a lot of trolling that goes on, even if it's at the expense of somebody. You know. Different arriving on the boat this with taxpayers' is, money, and I think a lot of people are upset about that. I want to make something clear because I'm a Muslim myself. When you say typical man from Cardiff, when you say typical, hang on. When you say typical man from Cardiff, you are again telling people that in your estimation, the person that committed this came in as an illegal migrant on a boat. That, that is not true. None of that is true. Well, what I'm at, well, what I'm actually doing, Pierce, because you may not be aware of this because you're part of the legacy media machine, which is why you defended Israel so heavily. I'm on YouTube. You're not allowed to have your I'm own opinion. I'm on YouTube. Le you're not I'm allowed. On legacy no, media. You're part of the My legacy show is media on machine. YouTube. And you're not allowed to have your own and opinion. But let me explain something. Every to you, word Pierce. of this will go I, up. I, as you know. Perfect. I perfect. I understand exactly how the media machine works. The f Pierce is not on regular TV. It's only YouTube. It seems like a regular... The fact that they kept highlighting that he's from Cardiff and showing pictures of him as a child, as opposed to showing pictures of him as the large, barbaric man he was which stabbed those little girls, was a deliberate PR spin by the propaganda arm of the British government to try and subvert and subdue the UK populace because they knew everybody would What's be outraged by what they saw. That's why every, every picture of him is he's a kid. Honestly. They keep saying he's from Cardiff. This was set up on purpose. Now, the point I was making is as he follows. He was literally the born in Cardiff. Cardiff. The do, Matrix do didn't well? pretend he was born in Cardiff. You've been posting cartoons of people coming in illegally, armed on little boats, because you want people to think that the person that did this... I feel like Tate has already acknowledged that he got that part wrong, though. But I, I, I understand Pierce's argument. He's going to keep coming back to it. Was that person. But he wasn't. You cut out there, Pierce. I think I understood you. I'm a Muslim myself, so there's no reason why I want any kind of violence against Muslims. That's the first thing that's very clear. Part, and I, I want to make something else very clear. I'm actually in a quite unique scenario as a Muslim revert, half black, half white. I've had both sides of this dichotomy try and recruit me, perhaps. I can't be taught to hate anybody. There's no Muslim alive who can teach me to hate anybody, and there's no white man alive who can teach me to hate anybody. There's no hate in my heart, there's only love. But when you have love, you have protectiveness. And you have to feel a protectiveness for the things you care about. And that's what I think a lot of- Same. Same. I feel like in my, in my comment section, people want me to sway away, but I'm like, I'm just listening to both sides and I'm making my opinion, I'm saying an opinion on whoever speaks. And people want me to, I feel like people want me to pick a side. And that's not something I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? I'm just listening. and Because I'm an outsider looking in. So me picking a side without enough information would be ignorant. You know what I'm saying? And it would be like not true to myself. Because I, 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 I currently, like he just said. I'm in a place of love, and I want everybody to figure it out, and I want everybody to come to, come to a means of understanding and, and go back to what I know the UK to be, a melting pot where everybody's accepted and can walk around freely and love each and, and show mad love to each other. You know what I'm saying? people don't understand we call people hateful all the time for having a point of view especially when they get out on the street because they feel like they need to express it yeah i'm not a hateful person at all i just got mad love from anybody around me that i call my brother or my family or in myself so if i do anything it's not out of hate it's out of love for me you know what i'm saying so if anybody like just as an example if anybody comes up to me and starts talking negatively to my face about me out of love for myself, I'm going to defend myself because I love me and I wouldn't let nobody disrespect me like that. A lot of these people were not hateful. A lot of these people were full of love and they were full of concern. And I you put literally up that cartoon, encourage people true. to feel hateful. You, you've encouraged How? people to feel hateful to, because you've encouraged people to believe the person that did this crime, this, this alle alleged 
person that did it because he's gone to, he's going to court and have to let the process do its due process. But the person who's been charged with the crimes of killing these poor girls is not an illegal migrant. But you wanted to demonise the illegal migrants by what you've been doing. In the UK ju 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 the UK judicial system, once this is going to trial and he's been deemed or whatever, the sentencing better be better be in line with the crime. I'm tired of seeing UK sentencing not do what they're supposed to do with like with like real hard criminals who've done heinous things. Like brother, he better get a real life sentence, a whole life term. I don't want to see no 20 years because his brother is 17. He'll be out when he's, what, 37 at that point? Bro, could still live a fulfilling life at that point. He doesn't deserve it. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately. Well, no, he just doesn't deserve it. R.I.P. to the three little girls and um, speedy recovery to the eight, eight other injured. Bingham last week. You wanted people to believe this was one of the people who come over on a boat illegally into this country, part of the so-called invasion. And here's the interesting thing about your position with regard to your conversion to Islam and becoming a Muslim. Muslims, as you know, have been ranting about you for the last few days and utterly betraying them because you've decided to associate yourself with Tommy Robinson, who is a far-right thug, who has been spewing utter horrible Islamophobic anti-Muslim rhetoric all week and yet you have not distanced yourself from him so the Muslim community in the UK now view you as part of the enemy too you know that how do you feel about that well I pray for my brothers and I think the ones the, the information I've seen and the replies I've seen have not been hateful from the Islamic community saying to Tommy Robinson that I will debate him on issues I don't think is failing to distance myself. I debate you all the time, Pierce, and we disagree on basically everything. I'm happy to argue with Tommy because we disagree on so many different points of view, and I think it's very important that we have conversation. The reason these riots are happening in the first place is because everybody's afraid to talk. I'm prepared to sit down with somebody I don't like and don't That's agree with. That's complete nonsense. To talk to Tommy. That's nonsense. The reason the riots are happening is people like you and Tommy Robinson have been spewing utter disinformation, which has led people to believe that the person that perpetrated these despicable crimes was an illegal Muslim migrant. I don't think that's the whole of it, though, Pierce. I don't think that's the whole of it. I don't think that's the whole of it. Who was on the MI6 terror I, watch list. Firstly, right. I'm saying I, you and Tommy Pierce, Robinson, let's, let's be between you. You shouldn't do that, though. You should give everybody their specifics. Tommy did this. You did that. When you group them, it makes it sound bad. For It makes it sound worse. Between you. Okay. I'm saying no, between you. But, but you where's the logic out there failure? A completely there's a logic false failure impression. Of, there's a logic failure of, of lumping me in with somebody who uh, I don't agree with. I agree. There is a logic failure right there. Now, don't group. Don't do that. <laughs> saying, oh, you and so him. So do you said, denounce hey, Tommy Robinson? Tommy Robinson, Tommy Robinson and I disagree Robinson. on a whole bunch of issues. I think he's, 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 he's completely him. incorrect on his view of Islam. We're not Is playing he, this game of constant him denouncing. For, do you denounce him for in spite, I think, inciting I, the rioting? I denounce him for everything bad he said about Islam. He's absolutely incorrect, and I cannot be his friend or support him for that no, reason. for inciting However, the rioting by telling people, people it was him. a Muslim illegal I'm not gonna migrant. Say, it's not for me... It's not. It's not for me to decide who has inspired, incited the rioting, and it's not for you to decide. Well, wow, you either. can't it's denounce that. The, a court denounce what? I'm you not going to sit here and say Tommy who's in Robinson charge of the riots because telling nobody people knows. he was an illegal my Muslim. View, my my view on why the riots happened is because I believe that the native population, the Christian population of the UK, feels like their voice is not heard. I think if they're Voice was heard and they had correct. No, that's not why the riots happened. Things would not be happening. Why does it keep muting? It's hearsay. If 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 you don't believe that's what happened, if, he, if these are just both opinions, then I believe for some people it's this. This is the reason. For some people, it's this reason, and for other people, it's other reasons. That's not why the that riots exactly happened. The riots happened. Happen. The That's riots happen because people because like things are written no, on social media all day, every day. No, Andrew. And there's no riots. No, Andrew. People finally had enough. 
after endless attacks where they felt like they did not get a voice Let me respond. politically. When you don't have a political Let avenue, me respond. you're going to choose a violent one. I think Tommy Let is wrong respond. about Israel, just like you were, because you were supporting the genocide in Gaza, and I stood up against you for that. I think Tommy no, is wrong about a whole bunch of any issues. genocide However, in Gaza. However, he has a voice. He, yes, you were. He has a voice, and I'm prepared to sit here and debate with him, and I'm prepared to correct him on the things he's wrong about. And for you to sit and then you support a genocide, and you're going to say I'm a bad person for saying that little girls shouldn't get stabbed by people who don't belong in the UK in the first place. I don't so care you're if you're a Muslim, again, I don't care if you're a Christian, what black you're or doing, white. Okay. Uh, nobody should I'm be turning respond. up into the country without a passport. I'm going to Absolutely respond. Absolutely nobody. I'm going to respond by saying this. I believe the successive Labour and Conservative governments have completely lost control of immigration to our country, both legal and illegal. They all promised tens of thousands net migration. It's never happened. We now had nearly a million people come in last year, net 700, 800,000, whatever it is, most of them legally, the completely outrageously large number, which is unsustainable for a country as small as the United Kingdom. We've also got a big issue with, although a much smaller issue, I would argue, with the illegal Love people coming in that. on these boats and some of them dying in the process, which is an appalling human tragedy perpetrated by evil traffic and this has to be dealt with. So on that, I completely agree. Perpetrated by evil traffickers. I agree with that, Pierce, but you got to understand people are moving from somewhere at their own choice. And these, a lot of people leave their home countries at their own choice because of what's going on. They're willing to risk their life. They know the kinds of, they know what may happen. They know what may not happen. It's a calculated risk that some people are willing to take to get away from the the struggles of their homeland. <gasps> I, think, I feel like a lot of people forget to say that. Just like when it comes to like gangs and... and I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> Continue. My issue with what's happened in the last week is that we've got Elon Musk talking about there now is going to be an inevitable civil war in the United Kingdom. And I've noticed what he hasn't done, I've called him out not, on this man. today. In his series of attacks on Keir Starmer, the new British Prime Minister, uh, he has tried to paint a picture that there is one rule of policing the uh, right-wing thugs who've been attacking mosques. Did he try? Uh, well, they have, as you know. And another rule for, the, uh, for uh, m Muslims walking around armed to the teeth looking for white people to attack. I think is both are completely reprehensible and I'm easily able to say that. The problem is Elon Musk has said nothing condemnatory about the initial rioting which has continued to go on which has been anti-Muslim and directly targeting mosques and Muslims for something that they had nothing to do with which was the killing of these children and I have a massive problem with that yeah. and I can, I, you have so boxed yourself I. if you don't mind so me do saying I, so well, hang on so do yeah, I, hang sir. on Hang on. You have boxed yourself into a position now where your own Muslim community in the UK are enraged with you because they believe you are siding with Tommy Robinson, who is leading a far-right series of attacks on Muslims and mosques and is being blatantly Islamophobic in the process. And you know that. And so what, what? do you say to the Muslim community who believe that's what you're doing? Well, if there's a small contingent of the Muslim community which believe that, I've yet to see so much vitriol it's like not pretending small. exists. But I want to make it very clear. I want to make it very clear, Pierce. I'll make it very clear here. I will answer the question. I am an Islamic revert, and I do not want to talk scripture because there's people more qualified than I, but I'll make it clear. I lead with love in my heart. The Islam I was taught was one of peace and tolerance. There's not a single person alive who can force me to take sides or to hate anybody else. And I don't care what kind of Islamic person you are to come along and tell me I should hate somebody else because of Islam is not the kind of Islam I prescribe to. I have half of my family which is Christian, half of my family which is Muslim, I'm half black, I'm half white. I do not want either sides of my family to face any kind of violence on the streets. I'm the person who's been calling for peace. You're reading out the odd tweet here and there. Why don't you read out the 30 tweets I tweeted explaining that we need peace on the streets and we need to restore some form of dem democratic representation to the House of Parliament? Told you that plays a part in the persona, the online personality where they only take the little trolling ones that you gotta do here and there. But the other 30, 40 tweets, I don't know if that's true. I don't know if he's just saying that. I'm just saying off what he's saying. There's other tweets out there where I'm consistently saying this, that, and the third, but. 
these online personality tweets where I'm trolling, I gotta be. It's the limelight. I told you, that's how it goes, man. You you only choose and lie by omission and try and pretend there's a problem where there's not. I love all of my Islamic brothers, and I also love every Christian, Buddhist, and Hindu. I'm a person who has no hate in his heart, and if anybody has a problem with me personally, I'm happy to speak to them about it. But all in all, what about I've Ju- not what seen what about this Jewish hate people? that you're pretending exists. I've actually seen. What about, I've actually seen unlimited what about Jewish support. People? I've actually seen huge support from the Islamic community. That's what I've seen because they understand that okay. in Islam we teach each other to lo- live okay, and love well, let me with read peace. You. We're not sitting right, here let, trying okay. to hurt each other. And actually, one more thing. One more thing. Stop talking for a moment. To, I will say to the Muslim brothers. I will say this. We we need to show the world that we are not the hateful ideology they think we are. We need to show the world that we believe in God and we trust God and that we're going to stand up for our beliefs and we're not going to allow ourselves to be watered down or walked all over. But we also need to understand right. that there's this terrible perception of us that has been painted by the Western media machine. And I need like to live with love. When I tell people I'm a Muslim, I see fear in some people's eyes. And I spend a lot of time trying to talk that fear out of them. There's love in my heart. There's nothing but love in my heart for everybody. Yeah, you keep for saying there's so much rioted, love in your heart. I will pray. Fine. There's a lot of love in your heart, but not, it On appears, when it comes to... Yeah, but you, your first response to the murders of these children was to issue a video in which you spewed complete nonsense about the perpetrator being an illegal migrant to this country. That does not fill people with love. It makes them hate all illegal immigrants to this country. As well you know, on August the 4th, you retweeted Fierce. the notorious white supremacist Nick Fuentes on the subject of the riots. And as you said this, or it, 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 he said this, Fuentes, it's clear that not only are these protests being amplified and directed by Zionist plants on social media, but the mayhem will also catalyst a major crackdown on speech and persecution of legal right in the UK. So it's Zionist plants are fueling this apparently. Do you agree with that? Well, I think the point he was trying to make, and this is the meta point, which is very important, is that fighting each other is never going to work. When you have people who live on the same street, that wasn't the point he made. Fighting each other, the point he made is that Zionist plants. Can I so finish? So Jewish people, may I finish? Jewish Pierce? people on social media were amplifying the riots. Do you you retweeted it, so presumably you agree with him. Well, Tommy and you do work for the same people, so that is interesting that you want to try and bring this point up. However. Let me make this clear. You literally retweeted when you have people on the same Fuentes, street. Who is, a, who is a disgusting white supremacist who spews anti-Semitic crap morning, noon, and night. You retweeted him. I don't even know who that is. Do you agree with him when he said it's clear these protests are being amplified? Sounds like a terrible person. And directed by Zionist plants on social media. Do you agree with that? Well, the point I agree with, if you will let me finish my answer, when you have white you people agree and with brown people not? on the same street, do you both, agree with Zionist plan? I'm trying to finish. The, I'm, I, I'm trying to answer the question. When you have black people, brown people, white people on the same street who are all upset with but the not government Jewish because people. the government has betrayed them, and I think everybody agrees that, and they're fighting against each other, this will only result in more government crackdowns and more power against everybody. Brown people and white people, Muslims and do Christians, everybody will suffer plans? from more totalitarianism from the government. Keir Starmer stood up and said, I'm going to be totalitarian and I'm going to use this You're as an excuse to take away You're more of your rights and more of your liberties and take away your ability to ever answer any point question and have a true point of view Fine. or to ever Andrew, assemble and make it clear that you're unhappy about you certain things. Why aren't you answering my question? What Nick, no, what, Nick was right, what Nick was right by about, what Nick was right about was the result of all of this senseless violence, which is going to be a government crackdown and everyone's going to lose their rights. He was right about that. And that's why it's so important that all my Muslim brothers understand that violence is not the answer. And all of the Christians also who are upset and worried understand violence is not the answer. And that we have more in common with each other than we do these elites who are selling us out. And, and what those about are the, the people who okay. are deciding that these boats Stop can arrive on the Stop talking for a border. moment. I'm just going to try the one more time. The average Muslim man were... on the street doesn't want boats arriving of undocumented migrants either. You can't turn up in the United Arab Emirates without a passport. You can't go to Qatar without a passport. Well, nobody you can't go to wants Bahrain it. without a passport. Only in the nobody UK. Wants only it. in the UK do we have a country so insane that we have no border. Nobody we don't know who's it. there. Crimes through the roof. Nobody's safe on the streets anymore. And then when you point these things out, somehow you're some kind of racist and bad person. This no, is not anti-Islamic to problem. say you need a passport to come to the UK. But that's the problem. In the you United see, Arab did... Emirates, you need a passport. They have the strictest immigration in the world. Fine. Andrew, had you just said that, that's fine. Okay, we would all agree that the small boats is a total I did say that, but you don't read it out. It shouldn't be happening. No, you didn't. You accused, you told your millions of followers and it was seen by 15 million people. All right, we're back. I don't know what just happened, but continue. 
15 million people, this video, that it was an illegal migrant who had committed these crimes. That was a lie. Are you prepared to apologize for that lie? It was a migrant as opposed to an illegal migrant. So I was incorrect. It wasn't. It was, it was born in Wales. As opposed to an illegal migrant. Well, this it is where we have the Welsh, false dichotomy. That we have he to, was this somebody is where we born have the dichotomy here of views. and was legally allowed to be in the country. Do you accept that? This is where we have the dichotomy of views, which I explained to you earlier on. I explained to you why they exist. Do you, like do you accept he was legally was permitted to be in the country? I'm, yes happy no? to, I'm happy to repeat myself if you don't understand. But when you don't give people a political outlet and they're trying to protect their children, they're going to go to extreme measures such as, I don't want anybody who looks like they're from anywhere else around me because I do not feel like the police can protect me anymore. And I feel like I have right. more in common and more in synergy with the people who think like and act like and look like me. That's what's going to happen. Right. This is not me advocating for anything. This is human nature, sir. This is human no, nature you that you are trying lies. to deny so you can sit here and virtually signal. you spreading no, lies. That's, this is the truth. This is human you nature, which is the bottom line lie. truth of things. If the police, if the police kept people safe like they do in Dubai, you could have a multicultural society. In Dubai, you have all different cultures, 80% immigration. Mm -hmm. Everybody praises. My boy is in Dubai. He lived there now. And he says <clears throat> there is absolutely no crime. He said you could leave a bit. He said you could leave $2,000 on a table in public and ain't nobody going to touch it. Like you can leave anything unattended in Dubai. I guess. As a beautiful place to live because it is safe, because the police keep it safe. When the police fail to protect little girls, you can't walk down London Bridge without getting stabbed. You can't wear a nice watch without getting robbed. You can't walk on your phone you without getting stolen. Why don't you just answer my question? Houses are broken Why into. Why don't you answer my I'm question? I'm answering it. When the police fail to protect anybody, you're going to see. Why did you lie? Yes, they are. They fail on every level. are you prepared level. to apologize? Why did you lie? I've already answered and said I was incorrect saying he was an illegal migrant. He was a migrant. And I'm not going to apologize to anybody who stabbed three little girls. Perhaps that's your business, but Pierce. That's not he mine. He wasn't a migrant. As far as I'm he was born in Wales. In solitary for the rest of his he life. He was born in well, Wales. This is where the dichotomy comes in. The dichotomy. I no dich you. Who does he want to receive the apology, though? I do. I do want to know. Like, he wants him to apologize, but like, I don't think he wants him to apologize to him per se. I want to. I think he wants him to apologize to the, all the people that were affected by that comment. See, I answered and asked the question. I asked and answered my own question. Three times me. that you fail to grasp because your mind. Is oh, not, I grasp it. Your mind I is grasp not it. You don't think people enough, born sir. in the United Kingdom are British? Do you now accept that when you said on the 29th of July that there was an illegal immigrant who had perpetrated this crime that you were wrong? I accept it looks like the facts of the matter say, in fact, it was a migrant instead of an illegal migrant. However, there's a huge number of crimes committed by illegal migrants, and I still think the country's not safe as long as they're allowed to come into the country. Fine. And, and is your position that somebody born in the United Kingdom is not British? Now this, I'm going to have to give you a 30-second answer to, Pierce, but this is going to be a very important conversation for decades to come, so please hear me out. The UK and the Western democracies are the only countries in the world where we will accept somebody born in the country, even if they have a different genetic lineage, are from that country. If you are born in China and you are not Chinese you by appearance, this. they will you never consider early, you Chinese. But what do you think? What do you okay, think? Let me answer. It's, but it's not about what I think, sir. Because there's a dichotomy with inside of the Western democracies, and this is extremely clear. If you do believe that... Yeah, you got to let him finish, Pierce. Somebody born in the country, irregardless of their genetic lineage, is from that country. The only way you can have a society function in this manner is if all people are fairly politically represented and if there is no two-tier policing. If you're going to allow anybody to turn up to a country, be born, become from that country, get preferential treatment in the politic political system and the judicial system, you are going to have outrage and you are going to have riots. If we're going to accept, sir, that people who are born inside of the UK at any point are from there and that is their country, then it's even more important that Keir Starmer represents everybody. He doesn't stand up and spit Fine, just vitriol, to answer which is going to engulf flames. But to answer and my more question, important, and more important that we do not have two-tier policing like we've been witnessing. Fine. I completely agree there should be no two-tier policing. Everyone should be exposed to the Agreed. force of the law in exactly the same equitable manner. But just to be clear, do you personally, Andrew Tate, believe if you're born in the United Kingdom, you're British or not? 
personally, I don't think my personal views have anything to do with it. And I think they'll, they'll just distract from the point I made. The point you I made is that You literally put your personal views out morning, noon and night. So why are you dodging the question? Because I don't think my personal views are that interesting. I think I could say my personal wow. views. Yes, I believe if you're born in the UK, you that you're from the UK. However, you do. Okay. However, fine. No, however, no, 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 however, no. However, but, you've answered the question. You believe they are British. So after that long speech, you agree with me. If you're, if you're born in the United Kingdom, you're British. Now the other thing. Yeah, but our opinion is not what matters. He's right. There is a dichotomy, whatever the word is. <laughs> He's made it clear. Like there is. And this is, you heard what the man said. My opinion is the same as that. Like, if you're born somewhere, you are of that. And you should be treated as that. The thing I want to get clarity on is this. This tweet from your friend, that ain't Nick, how it's seen him, all the time. Uh, who's actually that, it a doesn't white matter what I Nick think, Pierce. It matters what the people who are rioting are Fine, thinking. Fine, you made that and point. I wanted to know what you think. Question. Fine. Because you're trying, I just asked you're trying you what to get you a gotcha moment. And you're trying to deflect. I saw a gotcha well, moment. I'm, I'm well, yeah, you to be that's honest. That's what I think. You're right. Okay. That's what I think. But the people who are rioting think otherwise. And I'm trying to explain to you how they think. So we can give them a representation to prevent the riots happening again. I can understand other points of view where it seems you cannot. I, I, I answered the question. And that's what I'd be doing as a reaction channel. I'm just trying to understand all points of view. Sure. You've answered the question. Let me now answer this one simply. When you retweeted the white supremacist Nick Fuentes, who you call Nick, uh, on the subject of the riots, and he said... I heard you, Pierce, before. You called him your, your friend, Nick. It's well, clear that's his name. that not only are these protests being amplified and directed by Zionist plants on social media, do you agree with what he said? Is that why you retweeted it? I agree. I agree with the latter point about how everybody's going to lose their freedoms. What about the first point I just read out? Do you agree with that? Well, I don't have to agree with every single point of a tweet. I can agree with the you end retweeted result of it. a tweet. I don't know who's directing. So you directing. don't agree with I him? I don't know then. who's directing. So you, just to be clear, well, so I don't know who's, don't I don't know who's directing these riots. On social I just media know the end result. The riots. I don't know who's directing these riots. I know the end result. I know why the riots happened in my own personal view because of underrepresentation. I think Keir Starmer's but failed. Do I think you the think it was Zionist I think our political class has sold us out. And I think that the end result is going to be bad times for everyone in the UK. The, my fine. Muslim brothers it's are going to suffer. Bad Brown people will suffer. Christian will suffer. Black will suffer. It's bad times fine. for everybody. Fine. I'm not going to say who's directing what speech. because I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't I'm just telling speech. you exactly why I retweeted that tweet. Right. So a white supremacist anti-Semite, Nick Fuentes, blames Zionist plants for amplifying and directing these riots. And you retweet him. Do you so know, do you who, know, he's do you know who he's talking about when he says that? Do you? Yes. Who? He's talk he's talking about Tommy Robinson, who's an openly who's openly Zionist. Do you believe Tommy Robinson incited these things? Because if you do, you agree with Nick Fuentes. You have just been sitting here saying Zionists have been pushing Sorry, these just riots to be clear, for this whole so interview, just be, okay. sir. So you That's just very fell, interesting. you just fell into the exact same trap. You agree exactly with what Nick very just interesting. said. So now you're okay, going to sit here and say, oh, he's a white very supremacist to try and get gotcha moments when you so fail clear, with your own point of view. Just to Tommy be clear, is a Zionist, just sir. To, it's, Tommy is a just Zionist. Just to be clear then, so just to be clear, when you retweeted this, you believed Nick Fuentes was talking about Tommy Robinson. I believed he was talking about Tommy Robinson, but I only agree with the latter part of the tweet. As, as I said, right. But you agree with so, the first so, part of the tweet. So to be so clear, I don't know then, why you're okay. sitting here trying to use it as a gotcha so to when be clear, you agree with the tweet yourself. To be clear, to be clear, then you don't agree when he said the protests are being amplified and directed by Zionist plants on social media. You don't agree with that. No, I think that people had a legitimate okay, concern. Thank with Thank you. Ignored. That's all we need. I That's think fine. the UK is a powder keg. I don't need another you speech, agree with that, You've sir. answered the question. You, you I, agree with Zionists. It's fine. You it's believe fine. that Zionists have solved no this. No need for a speech. You do. No need for you a speech. You are an anti-Semite, Let me read sir. to you. Let me read to you 
uh, comments from the influential Muslim commentator who's been on Uncensored, Muhammad Hijab, who said to you this, my brother, I've always supported you, but you're severely off the mark on the following points. Your acquiescence to far-right figures like Tommy Robinson is haram as he is an enemy of Islam. Your lack of condemnation of far-right thugs who attacked a mosque and who attacked Muslims and Islam more generally. Many far-right hooligans want no peace with us. They consider us to be an impossible subject. Our existence frustrates them. You are one of us. They will never accept you fully until you embrace their beliefs. We worship Allah alone and build our purpose on this. No one can compete with this. I urge you to endorse this message and salvage a situation. Do you endorse his message? Do you now denounce right-wing thugs who committed attacks on Muslims and on mosques in the last week? And do you therefore condemn Tommy Robinson for inciting it? Oh, okay. So firstly, I absolutely condemn all violence, especially against Muslims and against mosques. I know Mohammed Hijab well, and I respect him, and he is extremely versed on the Quran and Islam. He's more versed than I am. I think that by having open conversation with the people I disagree with, I did not see myself as aligning with them, but perhaps this is a perception I need to address, of course. I think anybody who's been violent on either side is 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 doing the wrong thing and is being disgusting. I want to make something clear. Me too. Piers, you do this very... Violent on either side, you're both wrong. Violence is violence, and we do not perpetuate it or condone it common trick of me explaining to you why I believe something is happening and then you saying that that's my point of view. I'm not saying I agree with right wing people who are rioting and attacking Muslims. I'm telling you why I believe they did it. I believe they did it because they didn't feel like they had political representation. That does not mean I represent them. That does not mean I advocate for them. That does not mean that's I not agree why they with did them. it. I just sat that's here. Not why they did I just it. I just sat here while you told me Nigel Farage sold me out and I said that's fine. Yeah. I still agree with some things he says. I'm a very logical person. Fine. I'm not emotional about these things. Well, if you're logical, you'll I understand. But Andrew, Andrew, if you're logical, you will understand that is not why they did what they did. It's not why they rioted. They rioted in direct response to a social media-led campaign of disinformation which told them that the person who killed these little girls was an illegal Pierce. immigrant Muslim who was on Pierce. an MI6 Pierce. terror watch this list. Is very important. None of those Pierce. things were true. Pierce. Pierce, Pierce, this is very important, sir. And I consider you in many ways, in many ways a friend. This is very important. You advocated, please let me finish this, it's 30 seconds. You advocated for the vaccine and you got people killed. You are now gonna be advocating for people to lose their freedom of speech online. And there's not gonna be allowed, anyone's gonna be allowed discourse anymore. Cause you're sitting here pretending that somebody making a video being upset about little girls dying is the reason the UK was set on fire and not the failure of politicians across generations, sir. That is a fa that is a fallacy. It was you know fake it is a fallacy news. and it is dangerous. It, was fake it is dangerous for you to even push this done it. Because we're gonna end up no. in a world where no, no one is allowed wrong. to talk anymore. You're wrong. And it's gonna be you, wrong. people you like you, as much who, as you who advocated for it. And when you everyone's can shout as at much as you want, view, then the slavery you can is going to be as fully as you implemented want. on the populace. And you, you are a bad as person much as you for want, trying to Andrew. get people's point of view the, taken off the internet. No, fine. There are perfectly legitimate questions, as I've been agreeing with you about in this interview, about the levels of legal and illegal migration to the UK. They are simply unsustainable, and I will be hard on Labour until they well, work out a solution. we can't talk about it online. There are also there are we can't also talk about plenty it, sir, of you issues. Just said if we talk about there it, there'll also, be a riot. No, that we are talking about it, and you have millions of no, you followers. You just said we You're shouldn't be silent. allowed to. You have a you platform, just said we but should you not also be have a responsibility. To talk about it because it will you have a, a responsibility. Riot. You have a responsibility to be accurate. Do you agree? Oh, absolutely. And I was 95% accurate, which is more accurate than the BBC has ever been about anything. Or you, for extension, most of the time. You've mm. been wrong a whole bunch. Do you condemn Israel? Do you remember that? October 7th, do you yeah. condemn? I you did. condemn Israel yeah. and their genocide? Oh, it's about time. So I was right back then, and it took you six months to catch up. And you're going to see the six no, months you weren't from right now, back I'm still then. right. If we don't, you said, I'm right. If no, we don't cure, no. if we don't cure the disease, which is people feeling no. underrepresented by the political class, the symptoms, which is violence, are going to continue to prop up all around the country Fine, but forever. What you don't we seem to want to disease, accept, sir. Fine. What you don't seem and what to you want don't to want accept, accept is that what you are saying no. is that the politicians Let me put are the perfect question to you. and they've done nothing wrong, no. and the people I don't are, think they're people perfect. have no good point of view. And it's that we should shut nonsense. everyone up online and not let anyone talk. Complete nonsense. You are advocating Nobody for slavery for the population. That's what you're advocating Nobody, for. Let me speak. 
Nobody is shut up online. Elon Musk has made it much easier for everyone to be online and have their say. You yeah, that's, to that's X though. You do it all day long. You spew a lot of untruths. And I'm simply asking you, when you're wrong and, you, and what you say helps influence minds to go and commit riots as it did, because you and Tommy Robinson, between you and others who were amplifying. So Pierce just wants some accountability is what it sounds like. Like, hey, were you wrong on this? Say yes or no, and do you apologize? But apologize to who is the question? Which I've already said, I think he wants him to apologize to. And spreading this bullshit about who this person was ended up with rioting against Muslims who had nothing to do with the killing Pierce. of those girls. Pierce. And you Pierce. as a Muslim Completely. of all Pierce. people Pierce. should have been the first to announce Of course, it. Pierce. Pierce. Oh, no, Pierce. The logic failed. You're a smart man, but are you trying to say that if you say anything online, you are now responsible for all the consequences of that action? How So if a girl, if Cardi B sings about how she can drug men and lie that they raped her, if a girl then lies about being raped and ruins that man's life, Cardi B is responsible? Is that what you're saying? That is no, I'm so, asking you that's this. such a logic fail. It doesn't even no, make sense. No, I'm not sense. saying that. I'm There's not saying that. There's a lot of people that. who say I'm a lot of things online. There's a lot Andrew, of people let me who ask you a question. For insane things online all of the time. Fine, stop shouting. I'm not telling them to I'm not be able you to this... talk. You, I, I believe you've accepted in this interview that you spread disinformation about the person who perpetrated these crimes being an illegal immigrant to the UK. Would you like to apologize I believe, for spreading that wrong information? I, I, if the whole video was expressing my distaste, dissatisfaction, and disgust at the events that took place, I believe that I was 95% accurate and got a detail wrong. I didn't get anything important wrong. A 17-year-old man stabbed little girls in a Taylor Swift important. concert. And People that, attacked and, and asylum that shouldn't seeker ever hotels happen. That shouldn't because ever they happen, believed sir. it was an illegal migrant. That should migrant. never happen. That should never happen anywhere. So for you to sit and say, oh, well, us as the legacy media who never get anything wrong ever expect 100% accuracy when all you do is lie. I made it very clear that it is unacceptable that little girls die on the streets and that people need to make right. it clear that we are you not going to accept this You also spread lies about who did it. You've spread plenty you spread of lies, lies sir, yourself. And the lies have think, caused the riots. No, you, you've, no you, you free. I think lies and misinformation are the same thing. I think Andrew Tate got it wrong. He was misinformed. I don't think he blatantly went out there and was like, I'm going to lie. I know the truth, but I'm a lie. I don't think that's what happened. I think he was misinformed or misguided in what he thought was going on. And he said it. And he's already took accountability for that. But I don't think it was, he didn't blatantly lie. It's a, you know what I'm saying? Misinformed and lying is two different things. For you to sit yes. and say that my video is yes. the only reason there was riots is disingenuous. I didn't say and that. It is dangerous. I said you, you are Tommy gonna be Robinson, the person, and you're gonna be the person spreading who takes away bullshit. everybody's ability to express. You're, you're going to take away everybody's ability to express their opinion. And let me tell you something: people who don't feel politically represented at least feel like they have freedom of speech online. If you take that away as well, you're going to get things are going to get a lot worse. It's going to be worse for the country. Pierce, you have to be careful st sitting here on your show telling people that unless they said what you want them to say, they're not allowed to be on the internet. You are talking Stalinist. When did I say it's that? Communist. It's dangerous. When did I say that? It's, that's exactly what you when said. When did I say you that? You said that anyone you're who says anything again. online is causing the riots themselves again. directly, and they're directly you're responsible. Lying again. And there's no powder keg in the UK due to a failure of no. the policing and the judiciary and the politicians. And you're sitting here, and I'm telling you, Pierce, the things you're advocating for are going to cause more death and destruction than that vaccine you pushed or that country you supported as they bombed little children. Pierce, be very careful what you say. Yeah, listen, I'd, I'll take your lectures morning, noon and night. It makes no difference to me whatsoever. But would you like to take this opportunity finally to tell the rioters to stop rioting? Yes or no? Absolutely. Well, considering I've been saying that for the last four days on Twitter and you didn't read any of the tweets out, they should be in front of you. There's at least 30. Let me make it clear to the people on both sides of the equation, all of my brothers in Islam and all of the Christians and native people of the UK who feel like they're underrepresented. You have more in common with the people you live amongst than you do with these political elites. The people you live amongst love their children and they're struggling to pay the bills exactly like you are. There's no reason for UK, one of the greatest countries in the world, one of the largest empires in history, to be plunged into poverty if it wasn't being looted by a 
political class that do not care about you. And the people who do not care about you, the number one thing they want is the different breeds or different types or different categories of poor people to fight so nobody looks up and sees who the real enemy is. Britain can be a rich country and it can be prosperous and it can be safe and it can be regulated and the police can respond and it can be as beautiful as a lot as the first world Islamic nations are. There's no reason why it has to be the way it is unless a political class was failing the people who they're supposed to represent for generations. And that's where this anger and hatred comes from. Not because a video was made on Twitter. That is so infantile and asinine to believe okay. that some Here's little video on Twitter you. started all of these things. Here's what that I, is what's happening. Video. So stop okay. rioting amongst each other and realize who the real enemy of your freedom is. When you understand the truth Fine. about this world, listen, I was I was born on a Luton council estate and now I have hundreds of millions of dollars. And let me promise you, it's never poor versus poor. It's rich versus poor. When a black billionaire and a white billionaire meet, there is no racism because they are billionaires. Racism is how they use, is what they use to divide the poor people to stop us realizing that they lie about every single thing on the news, that they inflate the currency mm. constantly. They send our money away to wars we're not interested in. Nobody can afford their bills. Nobody can afford health care. And you're going to die alone in some nursing home because you can't afford a nice house because even then they're going to inheritance tax it. They don't want you realizing yeah. the truth. And that's why, but you that's know what? why. You know There's a way to avoid inheritance tax, though. You, we're not going to get into it. You know what, Andrew? Fight the poor people. You know what, Andrew? I agree about the political classes failing uh, people in Britain as they have in many other countries. I agree with it completely. We need better politicians who have better solutions to big problems facing our country. But you are big on truth and you abhor lies and you hold them to account because they lie and don't tell the truth. Correct. And yet these riots, Correct. you claim were just organic reaction to the problems of the country. No, they weren't. These riots happened because far-right thugs acted on false information that the purpose- I feel like it's a bit of both, man. I feel like they, it is an organic reaction and I feel like some people took what some people said online and ran with it also and they were mixed up as one and now like I always say, the message is diluted. Traitor of these wicked crimes against these three little girls that were killed and many others that were seriously wounded was an illegal Muslim who come into the country was on an MI6 terror watch list. That is why these riots happened. So, and that was all okay, a so despicable why did, why lie the, designed the, to make people have completely happen? the wrong idea. And okay. uh, hang on, as a result of those lies, mosques, Muslim mosques, Moths belonging to your religion that you've converted to were they then will attacked. They answer to God. They As will were answer asylum to God. seeker hotels to God. because people believed it was an illegal migrant when it wasn't. It was all lies. And you, as the great espouser of truth who hates lying, should be the first to say that anyone that spread any of those false rumors about him being a Muslim, about him being an illegal immigrant, about him being on the MI6 terror watch list, you should condemn unreservedly anyone who spread any of those false rumors because they're the things that inspired these riots bottom line end yeah i actually you know there's a good point here there's a good point here pierce there's actually a very good point you make and i actually want to speak to all the non-muslims who are watching this and understand that if you do your if you read your history and you understand how the political class have lied to us to get us into all of these forever wars they've tried very hard to make you believe that muslims are your enemy and there's been a large propaganda campaign by the Western media machine to make sure you feel that way. I assure you that 99.9% .9 of Muslims think just like you, feel just like you, and they're good people. And I don't want anyone to instantly assume that Muslims have committed a violent crime because a violent crime has happened. That's, that's you agree a terrible what I thing just that said? happens, and I believe a lot of that happens. Yeah, I agree that, of course, I'd love to live in a world of absolute truth. Then people like you wouldn't have a job and the BBC would be closed down. And then you would have words wouldn't be able to sit up there and say that I'm a human trafficker when he gets caught being a pedophile himself. Sir, my hard drives are clean. I've been searched by four federal agencies. I'm doing my absolute best. My hard drives are clean. I'm not a criminal. I'm not the reason why the riot started. I'm a person who was very upset, who has four four-year-old daughters himself, disgusted by what he heard, believes that that is unacceptable in any civilized civilization, and we should do anything it takes to prevent it from happening again. Perhaps I was wrong about the fact he was an illegal migrant and he was only a migrant. Perhaps I was wrong about that detail. However, I was right about most of the things well, you I were said. Wrong. People's concerns are what people's concerns are what led them to the streets, not my video on Twitter. And you telling people that they shouldn't be allowed to have an opinion online unless it's 100 percent factual is extremely dangerous because I'm they're going to come along, decide what the facts are, they're going to lie like like they did with the COVID vaccine. They're going to decide the facts. They're going to shut everyone up who disagrees. There's going to be no dissidents. We're going to live in the absolute matrix. It's going to be slave minds everywhere who's not allowed to talk. And we're all already getting there in the West as it is. You need to be very careful the ideas you push, sir. Very careful. 
I think. Well, you know what? It's Here's the important. idea I pushed. Truthfully. Here's the idea I pushed. I allow everybody onto Uncensored to have their views uncensored, as you've just done for the last hour. It will go up on YouTube, not the legacy media, but YouTube, uncensored. Every word that we have just exchanged will go up. So you can relax on that score. Andrew Tate, thank you very much. And people like me will react to it, and and it's under a Creative Commons license, and, and, you know, salute. Let me know your comments, and let me know your views in the bottom. The comment area is for you to speak your truths and opinions.